Testosterone cycles are pointless, and don't at me. Just give me a second to explain. If you are a young, healthy male in your 20s, you are not going to benefit much from a testosterone cycle. And in fact, it would probably be better if you just stayed natural. Now, I know a lot of you will come with the studies, such as the one done by Bazin, where they looked at 600 milligrams of testosterone a week and compared it to placebo. And it showed that even people who were taking 600 milligrams of testosterone a week and didn't train gained more than those training with placebo. And I'm not here to dispute that. Testosterone cycle are anabolic, but are they worth it? Especially when you're young, healthy, and in your 20s. But let me just repeat that. You are healthy, i.e. you don't have hypogonadism, and you are in your 20s. And the reason I say in your 20s is because of the research we have done on participants in their 20s demonstrating how testosterone cycles might actually not be worth it. Let me show you the data. In this study done by Georgi et al. called Muscular Strength, Body Composition and Health Responses to the Use of Testosterone in Anthate, a double-blind study. I like this study. Unfortunately, it was small in the number of participants, but the reason I like this study so much is that they compared testosterone and anthate to placebo. Not only that, they followed them up for 12 weeks after the cycle, which a lot of studies don't tend to do. So the study took participants in their mid-20s who were healthy, had been training for at least two years prior with no steroid exposure, and either gave them placebo, which was just oil, or testosterone and nanthate at a dose of 3.5 milligrams per kg a week. They were put on at a controlled exercise program, which was four days. If you want a free workout program, I can display it on the screen. But this is what they did, and they used this program during the cycle, which was 12 weeks, and after the cycle, which was another 12 weeks. And throughout this period, they were looking at their one rep max, as well as body weight, abdominal fat, and body measurements, such as arm circumference, thigh circumference, things like that. Furthermore, they looked into health effects of the steroids, but that wasn't really their primary goal. This again was one of those studies done back in the day where doctors refused to believe that steroids or you know, androgenic steroids actually had an anabolic component. So why don't we just jump into the results? The first one I'm going to discuss with you guys is the body weight. Now, as we can see in this table, the TE is the testosterone and anthate group, and the placebo is obviously placebo group. And you can see week one, week six, week 12, all the way up to week 24. Now at week 12, that was the last week on steroids. And as we see here, there was a bit of difference in starting weight, but it doesn't matter because it was all relative in comparison when when they tried to calculate whether or not it was significant. And what's interesting to note is that, yes, as we know, testosterone is very anabolic, especially so in comparison to placebo, and it did reach statistical significance. Whilst the individuals in the placebo group gained about a kilogram, those in the testosterone group gained about four kilograms at the end of the experiment. What's quite interesting to note, though, is their weight peaked at week six, and I'll get into that a bit later. But as we can see, as we follow up thereafter, the weight drops back down to just about one kilogram more than their starting weight. And when compared to placebo, 12 weeks after the cycle, it was not significant in comparison. And as you can see, those in the placebo group kept their size, which was minimal, but they kept it nonetheless, and it was about a kg in muscle. And, it's, and if we look at those in the steroid group, well, they gained about a kilo. What's interesting to note also is if we look at thigh circumference, chest circumference, and calf circumference, only the placebo group had a significant change post-cycle, post as indicated by the letters of the alphabet. And if we look at changes in the one rep max, they looked at one rep max on bench press. And it's obvious to see that the testosterone group had gained significant strength, not only in comparison to their baseline, but in comparison to placebo. However, when we look at the follow-up post-testing, it's no longer significant in comparison to placebo, but it is 
significant in comparison to their baseline. But what's also interesting to note is that placebo also had a significant change in comparison to baseline. Now I'll just quickly show the skin fold test measurements and such. What is interesting is that the fat loss was maintained in some areas of the body, but that was pretty much it. And then if we look at side effects experience, there were none in the placebo group besides increased self-esteem, but in those receiving testosterone, they had the development of acne, slight increase in frontal alopecia, and a significant increase in systolic blood pressure. It was raised on average by 10 millimeters mercury. The testosterone group did also uh, did experience positives, such as a positive improvement in their mood, increased muscle definition. This was all subjective, by the way. And those are quite common things to report when on testosterone. But what I wanted to demonstrate in the study of young athletes who had already been training for two years is that a testosterone cycle of 300 to 400 milligrams of testosterone a week for most people in that age range who are healthy is quite pointless. And we could see it in the results. The testosterone group at 12 weeks post cycle did not have any significant advantage over placebo in terms of their weight gain or strength gain. It just seems that the risks don't outweigh the benefits if we look at it logically. Those in the testosterone group experience side effects. Most of them are probably reversible as noted by the Harlem study. But again, you have to ask yourself whether or not it's worth it for a kilo in muscle gain, whereas you could have just got that naturally. Again, we have another study done by Forbes et al. Again, in individuals aged 24 to 26 who were healthy, young, and were given 3 milligrams of testosterone and anthate per kg. As we look at our, the graph here, again, you can see N equals 7, there was no placebo, and exercise wasn't controlled. But what we can see is there was a statistically significant increase in muscle mass that more or less returned close to normal at the end of the cycle or post-cycle. Post Similarly, with the fat loss they obtained, they in fact gained fat post-cycle. That's probably not statistically significant, but it's just to demonstrate that testosterone cycles, when you're young and healthy, are really not worth it. But I just want to reach out to those in their mid-20s who are looking into cycles that maybe it isn't worth it. Again, I don't know you. Perhaps you're an athlete and you need to go on a cycle to achieve whatever you want to achieve or you have bodybuilding aspirations. And I, I don't judge anyone who has done this. And perhaps your results were completely different from this study. Again, this is a good quality study, but the sample size is still small. But this is more for individuals contemplating whether or not they want to do their first cycle. And we're thinking about the typical testosterone, 300 milligrams, 400 milligrams, a week type cycle. So in summary, yes, testosterone builds a lot of muscle and it is anabolic. No one's going to argue anymore that steroids are not anabolic. But whilst they do build muscle, it's important to look at these studies and the participants after everything has occurred. How much do they keep? And from this study, not that much. It also demonstrates that just going natural kind of produces the same results at the end of the 24 week period. But those are just the thoughts that I've come up with from the study. I want to know what all of you guys think. And I know a lot of you have done these types of cycles. Was it worth it? And the people I'm targeting are healthy mid-20s individuals. Those like me with subpar testosterone levels, you're not included in this conversation. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the next video.